Hey everyone, it's Keely here for Sawyer and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me for today's soap making video. Now, a little while ago, my good friend Lee from Wicked Lou Goods sent me a message with a new product she was about to release, and it is this set here. We've got a new soap scraper and stamp set, and this one is to do a bunny. I fell in love with it immediately and asked if she could make me one. I arranged payment, and then the next day she sent it through to me. So today we're going to go and use the soap scraper and stamp set we're gonna make Easter Bunny soap now I will warn you I got probably a little bit over ambitious with this soap design and because of that I didn't do a particularly good job of scraping the bottom of my soap now this is in by no means any fault of the tool because it really it should give a nice crisp clean design both of these should um, but I got a little bit um, over cautious about what I was doing and then kind of um, didn't pull this through even enough and kind of destroyed the bottom part of my bunny but once you get the stamps on it it still looks fine and everyone who has seen the soap has easily picked up that it is an Easter bunny so this is the fault of the user and not the tools they are actually a really good tool set if you're interested in them I've left links down below to Wickedly Goods and she does ship internationally as well now this is going to be the only Easter soap that I do and only Easter product I do for this year um, so let's go and see how I'm going to make Easter Bunny soap. Let's go. All right, so I've got all the oils and the lye water down to the right temperature. And I'm going to admit, I am actually a little bit nervous about making this soap for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I just, I want to get it right because it just, I think it can be super cute once it's done. So I just poured my lye water into my oils. I'm going to work in three layers. We're going to start off with the bottom layer, which is going to be some grass that the, um, that the rabbit's going to sit in. So get this mixed up and then I'll explain a little bit more about what I'm doing. Right, so with my grass I am going to have like a really thin dark patch sitting on the bottom just to make it look like real you know dark grass there and then I'll have some lighter grass coming up so it looks a, gives it almost like a 3d effect that it's maybe got you know a field behind it I've probably poured off just a bit too much there um, I have also extruded over here some um, Easter egg shapes which I'm also going to put on the bottom and around the bunny so I'm really hoping this is going to work because I've done a few extra things here I'm going to do this one in here is a chartreuse green which is a bit of a darker green and now we're putting in some jade mica in here I'll get it mixed up and then we'll pop in our fragrance and the first thing I'll do is pour in my darker green here in fact I won't mix this bit yet I'll pour in my darker green we'll make it a little bit textured pop in our little eggs and then we'll pour on this darker color. Now before I put my Easter eggs in, I'm just going to put my little bunny down the end here so I can make sure that I'm putting my eggs in the right place here. So let me grab the first one and I'm just going to oh drop it in there. They're not whole pieces this time. I usually try and do my embeds whole pieces, but I couldn't do this one. So I'm going to have to make sure that they don't fall apart too much and line up. That's looking pretty good. I need that one to stand up a bit more. Where's that spoon gone? Let's see if we can get it to stand up because it's fallen over. That's better. I'm just making sure I've got enough um, space down the side here to get some soap in there as well so we don't end up with too many air pockets. And the idea is I actually want two on one side of my rabbit but I'm making sure that I'm getting it close enough together so we can get some soap between them but so that when I pull my bunny through it's not going to get stuck on any of these eggs. That is looking pretty good like so, so let's squish that one down. I'm just going to lift my bunny up a little bit and I think 
we're getting a bit close there so let's just nudge that over just a wee bit and we're a bit close there so I'll just push that across all right so that is looking pretty good I think we're going to miss all of those I'm just going to pop that one in there I know this one's going to definitely fit so let's pop that one in about the middle I wanted to go for odd numbers because odd numbers always <laughs> look better so I'm just going to push that one in there so we've got two on one side one on the other giving us three little easter eggs that one just looks like it's toppled over a bit so all right i'm happy with how that is in there now so i'm going to get this bit mixed up and then poured over the top Alright, so now that I've got that in there, I'm going to leave this to sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll start scraping the first layer for our bunnies. I've allowed this to sit for about 10 minutes until it becomes nice and firm and now we're going to use the first of the scraper tools. Now if you caught my sunflower um, video that I did, one of the things I mentioned on there is that you have to be careful to make sure that you're pulling these the same way down your mould and I put little markings on mine. Well Lee watched that video and she now actually has her logo on the fronts of these moulds. So what I'm going to make sure I do is I'm going to put my little bunny um, scraper down this end where the little lifty bit is on my mold so I remember and I've got it so that the logo is pointing this way so when we actually go to do the upper layers and I'm using that one I'll make sure that the logo is also pointing this way so we make sure our bunny lines up now that I've got that in there I'm just going to very gently pull this down my mold and it's going to start pulling up that soap and as I start getting a buildup of soap, I'm going to pull it off with my spatula and I've got a piping bag over to the side here and I'm gonna put all that excess in there. And then I have some little molds that I do for my kids' soaps. I'm going to put the excess in there. So the bunny body is all scraped out and the next thing I need to do is mix up some white soap which will fill this cavity and then come a fair way up the side here. Whenever I do these scraping tools, I like to be really generous with the soap that I'm doing and actually scrape away all the excess that I don't need because I find I get a much nicer finish at the end. Um, so I'm gonna get our soap mixed up and I'm also gonna pipe what I scraped out of here into some kids' molds. So this has been sitting here for about 10 minutes and it's time to scrape so I've got my next um, scraper tool here got my logo facing down this way I'm going to slide it into the end and then I'm just going to start pulling and scraping into the pot now when I um, do my white um, soap I've now got this little thing that I tend to do oh it doesn't want to move there it goes I now have this thing when I'm mixing my white I had a little bit of trouble getting some of my white to mix in one day and with titanium dioxide you really do need to use the stick blender to make it blend in but it can also make your soap accelerate so you kind of you're in this bit of a catch-22 of do you stick blend to get it to you know go through your soap properly and accelerate your soap or do you not stick blend and have nice fluid soap so 
I decided one day to actually put some titanium dioxide into a smaller jug pour some of my soap in and then pour that into the main bucket and I found since doing that I get really nice white results um, which are you know nicely dispersed and very few um, glycerin rivers when I do it that way as well so that is just a little tip I think I've left this sit a little bit too long some of my bunny ears are getting a little bit damaged as well but we're getting through it let me scoop this bit off all right now i can actually see some of my bunny ears have scraped off just a little bit too much so i'm just going to fill in those gaps oh by just getting some little bits of my soap and just gently pushing them in where it's pulled out a little bit too much so i'm just going to do a little bit of tidy up and then we'll come back and we will do the um do the sky all right so now we're at the point to see if i get my calculations right and have enough to fill up that sort of sky area hopefully i do so we're going to do a nice blue sky with some wispy white clouds through it so i've got some titanium dioxide in this one i'm not going to do a lot just enough to put a little bit of a wispy look through and i'm going to use some of this cornflower blue mica from off of heirloom so i'm just going to pop some of that in i tend to find blues are really hard to get right so we'll start with that and see what color we get but first of all we'll mix that white it's a little bit too greeny for my liking and what i have recently discovered is throwing in a bit of neon blue can often bring these blues back up to a really nice color so let's see if that makes a difference not sure if it made much of a difference on the camera but it definitely did in my little batch here all right let's grab our fragrance and I don't think I actually said what the fragrance is I'm using. <laughs> Generally, I do my Easter ones in black raspberry vanilla because I know it always plays well. Kids like it. The big kids like it. So, and it, to me, it's just that sort of nice spring sort of smell, even though for us... Um, we're generally in about autumn by the time we get through into Easter, <laughs> but it's still a really nice smell for all year round. So got our white mixed in, let's mix our blue. Then I'm gonna do an in the pot swirl so we get those nice wispy clouds going through the blue and then we'll pour it into that mold. I decided that I am actually just a little bit too short so I've just mixed myself up a little bit more blue um, just to fill up that mold so we're going to end up with two different colors and I've mixed up just the right amount there so we will see a little bit of an extra swirl of blue but I don't think that's gonna ruin it I think that will really add to the whole look it's one of the reasons I have really liked having um, all of my oils kind of master batched in my oil tank I basically fill that oil tank up and then if I am short on something like this I can very easily just grab a little bit more soap oil and make up that difference it really does help so I did miscalculate this one just a little bit it's always hard because the shapes aren't um, even so you don't really know how much you're just taking a bit of a guess um, there is I kind of roughly measure my sort of outlines so like I got the bottom of the bunny and worked out if that was a rectangle how much soap I would need to fill it up so there are ways of working it out it's just not very easy <laughs> but having that um, bucket of all the big oil tank there filled with oils means I can very quickly and easily 
topping up so very pleased with the top of that I do feel it needs a little bit of sparkle and I'm gonna go for this one here it's a bit of a white sort of translucent one here and this is a biodegradable glitter so it is all plant-based that finishes off the top now there's really not much to <laughs> to bring you down to see and it is quite fluid so I'm not going to pick it up but I am going to leave this one set up overnight and we'll cut it open tomorrow and then um, we'll have a look at stamping it a bit later okay we are ready to cut into the Easter Bunny soap and see what we've got on the inside I've had it sitting here on my bench so people it's been out of the mold it's been sitting there like that just airing out a little bit and so many people have come in asking when the Easter Bunny soap is going to be ready people are already liking what they're seeing and they've not even seen the inside or what I'm going to finish it with yet so I think this one might be a bit of a fast seller let's get it cut open and see if we were able to get some good shapes on the inside oh thunk all right so let's get rid of that end bit there and we'll have a look and that is the inside now I'm going to admit now I don't actually know <laughs> what I did when I was scraping this because generally I will do one scrape and get the the cavity out and then I will take the tool again and I will scrape down it just to clean it up a little bit and when I put the tool in I noticed that there was a fair bit of gap around my bunny and I think as I pushed it down into the mold I think I pushed it a little bit into the silicon so just pushed it off by about a mil or so so it's not the cleanest of scrapings this is by no fault the um of the tool it is the user who is at fault you'll often find that if things have gone wrong it's usually the user that's done something wrong um so even though um it's not the best scraping on this one once we actually get our little stamps on there it's really going to bring our little bunnies to life yeah i've Oh, and I know what the other thing was that I did wrong, um, why I've got such a sort of divot here. I had an awful lot of white still sitting on the top of my green, and instead of leaving it and thinking that it could be wisps of, um, of cloud, I did scrape a little bit of that green away, and I think I've actually scraped away some of his cheek. So again, that is not because of the tool. It is because of the user of the tool. But I'm still pretty happy, because once we actually start getting our little stamps on here, as we actually move a bit further down, I am getting more of that sort of bunny shape that, we, that the tool should actually be given. But once we've actually got our little um, stamps on here, it should all come back into its shape. So this is purely the user at fault on this one. Um, but otherwise I'm still actually happy. So what I'm gonna do is get all of these off of the, um, off of here. And then I'm going to leave it to sit here for a couple of days just to dry out a little bit. And then we'll come back and we'll use the little stamps to finish these bunny rabbits off. Okay, so as you can see, I have just gone around and I've tidied up all the edges of these soaps and we are now ready to stamp on them. And I'm gonna do the front and the back. Now, as I've got these laid down here on my greaseproof paper, I, for me personally, I've got them so all of my two eggs are on the left side of my bunny. And to go with this, we actually do have three different stamps. Initially, Lee did these top two ones and I asked if she could do the face. Um, even though some of my rabbits are a little bit distorted, I'm still going to stamp the face because I asked her for it and it kind of gives people have an idea of what it's meant to look like and then on the back I'm going to do the back side of the bunny or his little tail I have had a play with one of my soap pens and you can see that is this stamp so it does actually come up absolutely beautifully and I did the little bunny these are one of the soap pens that go out my soap sampler packs so I'm going to leave that one there we'll put that one to one side but you do get that sort of choice of what you want to do I'm going to start off by doing my little faces I'm just going to line up the stamp 
over the white, give it a gentle tap and there is the face. It just looks like he's a little bit windswept. Even his ears look windswept there. So he's super, super cute. And then what I'll do is once I've got them all done, I'll turn them over, I'll grab the little um, bunny backside, and then I will line that up with the white. Give that a bit of a out stamp without actually hammering my finger. And there is the back of the um, soap there. So we'll do just one more with the face so you can see front and back together. So that will be what my little bunnies look like. All right, so there are the soaps all done. They're gonna head off over to the Curac. I really do like this scraper and um, soap stamp set. I probably did get a little bit over ambitious trying to put the two little Easter eggs in there. And I think as I was pulling my scraper along, I was very aware of these eggs and didn't want to knock them. I should have only done one egg on either side of the bunny, but that is entirely my fault. And next time I use this scraper tool, I will only put one Easter egg and then I should be able to get a really nice clean scraping of that bunny but that won't be till next year but if you are interested in this scraper tool and stamp set I have left links to Wickedly down in the description box she does ship internationally as well um, I hope you've enjoyed watching how I made my Easter bunny soap here if you did why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below and until the next video comes out I hope you have a good one and I'll see you then bye